Good afternoon all. Today I thought I'd play with logic gates, uh, TTL logic gates. This is a 74LS02. Uh, the package is a quad two input NOR gate and I've wired it up as a flip-flop. So if you go to the Wikipedia article on flip-flop, electronic version that is, you get a simple transistor circuit of a flip-flop and then you get this uh, logic based circuit using these NOR gates and uh, on the screen this flips backwards and forwards between red in one state and red in the other to show you approximately how this flip-flop works. Well I can show you how it works by pressing these buttons on my little board. Now the Wikipedia article in common with a lot of other articles and a lot of videos on YouTube show the outputs of this uh, simple SR latch as Q and not Q, but then they show truth tables with illegal states and indeterminate states, and the whole thing gets very confusing. So what I wanted to do was go right back to first principles and just map this thing out for myself. So that's what I'm gonna do. So here's my circuit. Um, it's just one half of a 7.4 LSO2. I'm only using the first two gates, uh, the gates on the forward side of this chip here. Uh, it's cross-coupled NOR gates. The NOR provides an inverting function and you can actually see that if I start pressing buttons. Uh, this button is in its high state. Physically it's in its high state because there's a little spring underneath it so the button is sitting high. If I press it down it goes to its low state. But that also works electrically because if I press the button it links the input pin there through the button to ground. Now TTL inputs have a tendency, LSTTL have a tendency to pull high, so we don't need pull up resistors. So this button is now putting a high into the input of this gate. If I press the button to its low position, it puts a low into the input of the gate and the output goes high. So there's your inverting function, high on the input, low on the output, low on the input, high on the output. So now I'm going to turn this round so that this um, diagram exactly matches the physical layout of my board and I've built a truth table here. Inputs on the input side, outputs on the output side and I'm going to start drawing in the logic for this particular gate. Now notice that the two buttons are currently high. This one's up, this one's up. The two outputs are low, so I can put that in right now. When the two inputs are high, the two outputs are low. Well, that's a start. Okay, the next uh, part of the truth table, the next state I want to explore is one, zero. So that's high, low, so let's press that low. And we get an output which is low, high. So low on the left, high on the right. Correspondingly, if I press the left hand button and take it low, I've got low high on the input, high low on the output. Low high on the input, high low on the output. Now this is interesting because so far the outputs are just the opposite of the inputs. It's a truth table that looks a bit like we've got two inverters and in a way we kind of have because these gates have this inverting function. The other thing you'll notice is that so far this circuit is entirely combinational. The outputs respond to the inputs directly with no memory. Well that's combinational logic. Inputs and outputs are directly related with no memory of previous events. But now we come to the input low low. Let's see what happens when we put that on the two switches. Low low, press them both together. Well that's interesting, only one of the inputs goes high. Let's do that again. Low low, well now the other input's gone high. So in fact, this input state of low low has two different output states. The left one and the right one. And I can pretty much determine which one comes on, not through any sort of telekinesis, but by pressing one of them slightly before the other one. So I've added another state to my table because there are two different output states, 0, 1 and 1, 0, for the 0, 0 input state. Let's put that input state on, 0, 0, 
I can either get one zero on the output or zero one on the output. Now this is often referred to as the indeterminate state, but it's not indeterminate at all. It's dependent entirely upon which button I press first. If I press the left button first, low, low, the left light comes on. If I press the right button first, low, low, the right LED comes on. So I've marked these three states as combinational because they are combinational. High, high on the buttons, low, low on the outputs, low, high, high, low, uh, high, low, low, high. They're all combinational, but this state, low, low, is sequential because the output depends on the sequence of events that preceded me going low, low. If I was at high, low, and then go low, low, we get that state. If I was at low, high, and we go low, low, I get that state. So I've drawn these two arrows that show the sequence of events that leads to the two different outputs for the input state, low, low. Let's try it out. Let's start with low, high on the input, low, high. We now go to this state, low, low on the input, and we get one zero on the output. Now let's start with this one out here. It's a one zero on the input. We now go to the zero zero on the input and we remain with zero one on the output. That's that state there. So this now fully defines the function of this cross coupled NOR based SR latch. Now, so far you'll notice that I've not actually labeled my inputs and my outputs. I've just drawn my truth table so that everything lines up. Wikipedia called them set and reset. So let's do that. It doesn't really matter which way round. They're quite arbitrary. Um, the Q and the Q bar, I can't add to this diagram because if Q is never equal to not Q, then this state here, where the outputs are both zeros, can't exist because you can't have Q the same as not Q, or Q this side the same as not Q. So I simply can't do it because it's an illegal state. And in fact, a lot of articles on this particular flip-flop say that um, this state here is illegal. Well, it's not illegal. It's only illegal if you insist on calling these Q and not Q. Well, I'm not going to. Well, now I'm gonna do the whole thing all over again, but using a 74LS00, which is a quad two input NAND gate. And again, I'm only using these first two gates, but I'm using NAND gates instead of NOR gates. Now, initially I just took this chip out and put the 74LS00 in place of it, but it all went a bit wrong. And for quite a while, I couldn't work out what was going on until I realized that the gates were actually configured completely differently. Here's the LS00. Pins one and two are inputs and pin three is an output. The NOR gates the other way round. Pin one is an output and pins two and three are inputs. And that confounded me for quite a while. So here we are, cross coupled NAND gates. Now the first thing you notice is that when these two buttons are in their high state, we've got this one of the outputs is on thing going on. And I can flip it across simply by pressing a button. So high, high on the input gives us this two different states on the output. So I need to draw two high highs here and the two options for the output. Let's do that now. So here we are, we've got two options for high, high on the input. Uh, both inputs are high, as you can see at the moment. Press one of the switches and both inputs are still high, but we've got the opposite state on the output. So here are my two states. These are the sequential input states, or one input state, you might say. Now let's map out all the combinational states. We'll start at zero, zero. Well, zero, zero on the input is one, one on the output. Now let's go zero, one on the input, and we have one, zero on the output. We're getting this inverting thing again. Uh, zero, one on the input, one, zero on the output, the other way around high, low, or one, zero on the input gives us zero, one on the output. One, zero on the input, zero, one on the output. And the truth table is complete. All I gotta do now is add in the links that show which leads to these two outputs 
which sequence of events leads to these. And here are the lines here. If I go 0, 1 on the input, 0, 1, and then go to 1, 1, the output goes from 1, 0 to 1, 0. It actually doesn't change. Uh, the input changes state. The output doesn't change state, but that's the path. If I go from uh, 1, 0 on the input, that's there, to 1, 1, we follow this path on the output of 0, 1 to 0, 1. Again, no change in state pressing that button. Now I quite like this version of the circuit because it kind of acts like an electronic toggle switch. If I press one side, the LED comes on. If I press the other side, the other LED comes on. It's not really going to work as a digital flip-flop, particularly if I want to call these outputs Q and not Q, because I still have this illegal state. If I press both switches, in other words, if both inputs are low, I've got this illegal 1-1 output state. I wonder if there's a way I can get rid of that. Well, I've noticed something about this truth table. The illegal state is where the input is 0, 0. Both buttons press down. That gives me 1, 1 on the output. But notice something about the outputs. None of the outputs is 0, 0. So the output of this circuit can't supply a 0, 0 to the next circuit. Well, what if the next circuit was simply another one of these? Then the second one of these would never get the zero, zero. So what if I follow cross-coupled NAND gates by two more cross-coupled NAND gates? The outputs can never be zero, zero, so they can't feed a zero, zero into the next stage. I think I'll wire that up. So I've put two wire links in here to cross-couple the NAND gates on the other side of the chip, much as I've cross-coupled them on the first side. Um, I now need to take my LED signals not from the outputs of the uh, front side of the chip, but to the outputs of the rear side. Now they're one position shifted across because VCC is up on that corner. So this one comes off and goes into the last pin there like that and now I need to put little jumper links across to link the uh, two gates on this side to the two gates on the other side. So here are the two jumper links linking the outputs of the front side of the chip to the inputs on the rear side and now what I've got is if I press a button the opposite LED comes on well that's kind of slightly different to how it was before. Um, when my both, both my switches are up so high I get one of the outputs on, well that was what it was before, but the illegal state was when I pressed them both together, and it's not illegal anymore. It's sequential, because it depends on what goes before, but no more illegal states. In fact, in all four combinations of inputs, Q, the output on one side, is not equal to not Q. So I finally solved the Q not Q thing, so I can write that on my diagram now. So here it is, here's the circuit diagram. It's a cross-coupled NAND uh, SR latch followed by another cross-coupled NAND SR latch because we know that the illegal state that this cannot produce can't then be propagated into the second half. Now, uh, if I press the left button low, it flips the Q output high. So this is actually set, but it's not set. This is reset, but it's not reset. So if I not reset, in other words, I take the reset button low, my Q not output comes on. If I press the set button low, my Q output comes on. So that all works and no illegal states. Both the outputs cannot be either uh, high the same or low the same. All combinations result in legal outputs. Brilliant. Now, because this two-stage SR latch is uh, much less combinational than the single-stage one, this is much more sequential, I'm not going to draw a truth table. I'm actually going to draw a state diagram. Now, I'm only interested in Q. Uh, I'm not interested in not Q because not Q is always the opposite of Q. So here's Q, and I'm going to draw a diagram of what happens when it changes from a, a 0 to a 1. And in fact, what causes Q to change from a zero to a one. Well, here's Q, it's a one at the moment, so let's press whatever is necessary to get it to a zero. Now, what do we have to do to change this from zero to one? Well, we have to 
press this button. So the S button or the not S button has to go from high to low. So high to low gives us that change of state. Now how do we change Q from a one back to a zero? Well, we have to press this, I think. So is it the not R button goes from high to low? Yes, the not R button goes from high to low. So that's a diagram showing how state changes, oh, uh, I should have put the uh, not S there and the not R there. So edge transitions on not S, so let's get not S. High to low takes us to the Q is a one state, that's this transition. A high to low on not R, that's that one, high to low takes us from Q is one to Q is zero, and that's that transition. So now I think I've built the perfect electronic toggle switch. We can toggle from one state to the other. Q is always uh, the opposite of not Q. There are no illegal states. Pressing both buttons doesn't do anything other than doing that change of state. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to use this little circuit um, as a toggle switch, an input toggle, for uh, some more logic experiments. So there we are, there's a little look at the uh, set reset latch, um, a mostly combinational circuit. It's only partly sequential. It's much more sequential when you put two of them, one stacked behind the other, and you actually come out of this with a reasonably useful circuit, my electronic toggle switch. Now, if you think that uh, I didn't stick entirely to the rules of combinational and sequential logic, well, I didn't really like the rules, so, well, I might have broken them. Cheerio.